The Dirty Shepherdess, which is found in the Green Fairy Book. Once upon a time there lived a king who had two daughters, and he loved them with all his heart. When they grew up, he was suddenly seized with a wish to know if they, on their part, truly loved him, and he made up his mind that he would give his kingdom to whichever best proved their devotion. So he called the older princess and said to her, How much do you love me? As the apple of my eye, answered she. Ah, exclaimed the king, kissing her tenderly as he spoke. You are indeed a good daughter. Then he sent for the younger and asked her how much she loved him. I look upon you, my father, she answered, as I look upon salt in my food. But the king did not like her words and ordered her to be quit the court and never again appear before him. The poor princess went sadly up to her room and began to cry, but when she was reminded of her father's commands, her, she dried her eyes and made a bundle of her jewels and her best dresses and hurriedly left the castle where she had been born. She walked straight along the road in front of her, without knowing very well where she was going or what was to become of her, for she had never been shown how to work and all she had learned consisted of a few household rules and receipts for dishes which her mother had taught her long ago. And she was afraid that no housewife would want to engage a girl with such a pretty face. She determined to make herself as ugly as she could. She therefore took off the dress that she was wearing and put on some horrible old rags belonging to a beggar, all torn and covered with mud. After this, she smeared mud all over her hands and face, and shook her hair into a great tangle. Having thus changed her appearance, she went about offering herself as a goose girl, or shepherdess. But the farmer's wives have nothing to say to such a dirty maiden, and sent her away with a morsel of bread for charity's sake. After walking a great many days without being able to find any work, she came to a large farm where they were in want of a shepherdess and engaged her gladly. One day when she was keeping her sheep on a lonely tract of land, she suddenly felt a wish to dress herself in her robes of splendor. She washed herself carefully in the stream as she always carried her bundle with her, it was easy to shake off the rags and transform herself in a few moments into a great lady. The king's son, who had lost his way out hunting, perceived this lovely damsel a long way off and wished to look at her closer. But as soon as the girl saw what he was at, she fled into the woods swiftly as a bird. The prince ran after her, but as he was running, he caught his foot in the root of a tree and fell. And when he got up again, she was nowhere to be seen. When she was quite safe, she put on her rags again and smeared over her hands and face. However, the young prince, who was both hot and thirsty, found his way to the farm to ask for a drink of cider and inquired for the name of the beautiful lady that kept the sheep. At this, everyone began to laugh, for they said that the shepherdess was one of the ugliest and dirtiest creatures under the sun. The prince thought some witchcraft must be at work, and he hastened away before the return of the shepherdess, who became that evening the butt of everyone's jests. <laughs> but the king's son thought so often of the lovely maiden with whom he had only seen for a moment, though she seemed to him much more fascinating than any lady at the court. At last he dreamed of nothing else, and grew thinner day by day, until his parents inquired what was the matter, promising to do all they could to make him happy as he once was. He dared not tell them the truth, lest he should be laughed at. He only said that he should like some baked bread by the kitchen girl on a distant farm. 
Although the wish appeared rather odd, they hastened to fulfill it, and the farmer was told the request of this king's son. The maiden showed no surprise at receiving such an order, but merely asked for some flour, salt, and water, and also that she might be left alone in the little room adjoining the oven, where the kneading trough stood. She began to work, and she washed herself carefully, and put on her rings, but while she was baking, one of her rings glued into the dough, and when she had finished, she dirtied herself and let the clumps of dough stick to her fingers so that she became ugly once more. The loaf, which was a very little one, was brought to the king's son, who ate it with pleasure. But in cutting it, he found the ring of the princess and declared that to his parents that he should marry the girl whom the ring fitted. So the king made the proclamation through his whole kingdom, and ladies came from afar to lay claim to the honor. But the ring was so tiny that those who had even the smallest hands could only get it on their little fingers. In a short time, all the maidens of the kingdom, including the peasant girls, had tried the ring. And the king was just about to announce that their efforts had been in vain when the prince observed that they had not yet seen the shepherdess. They sent to fetch her, and she arrived covered in rags, but with her hands cleaner than usual, so that she could really easily slip on the ring. The king's son declared that he would fulfill his promise, and when his parents mildly remarked that the girl was only a keeper of sheep, and a very ugly one at that, the maiden boldly said that she was born a princess, and that if she would only give her some water and leave her alone in a room for a few minutes, she would show them what she could look like, and as well as anyone of fine clothes. They did what she asked, and when she entered in a magnificent dress, she looked so beautiful that all they saw that she must have been a princess in disguise. The king's son recognized the charming damsel of whom he had once caught a glimpse of, and flinging himself at her feet, asked if she would marry him. The princess then told her story, and said that she had found it necessary to send an ambassador to her father to ask his consent and invite him to the wedding. <clears throat> the princess's father, who had never ceased to repent his harshness towards his daughter, had sought her through the land, but as no one could tell him anything of her, he supposed her dead. Therefore it was with great joy he heard that she was living, and that a king's son asked her in marriage, and he quitted his kingdom with his eldest daughter as soon as he could be present to the ceremony. By the orders of the bride, they served her father at the wedding, only bread without salt and meat without seasoning. Seeing him make faces and eat very little, his daughter, who sat beside him, inquired of his dinner was not to his taste. No, he replied. The dishes are carefully cooked and set up, but they are all so dreadfully tasteless. Did I not tell you, my father, that salt was the best thing in life, and yet when I compared you to salt, to show you how I loved you, you thought slightingly of me and chased me away from your presence. Psst. The king embraced his daughter and allowed that he had been wrong to misinterpret her words. Then, for the rest of the wedding feast, they gave him bread made with salt and dishes with seasoning, and he said they were the very best he had ever eaten. <laughs>